this here. This one we got. Hmm. Oh, hi everyone. This year, we're going to grow a garden in the backyard. Squeaks and I were just looking through our seeds. Right, there are a lot of different looking seeds. Sometimes it can be hard to tell what kind of plant a little tiny seed will grow into, but we can find clues in how the seed looks. These are bean seeds. See how they are big and shiny? And these are radish seeds. They are really tiny and round. Those are tomato seeds. They are also tiny, but notice how their shape is more flat compared to the radish seeds. Hold on, Squeaks. I'm excited too, but it's still pretty cold outside. We have to plant these each at the right time and in the right place to make sure they get the best chance at growing big and strong. Every plant lives in a habitat. Sometimes we talk about how animals come from different habitats. The same is true for plants. A habitat is a place where plants and animals live. In their habitat, they can find everything they need to survive and grow. Some habitats are cold, while some are hot. Some are very dry, and others get lots of rain or snow. Some are even underwater. In other words, there are many different kinds of plants, and they can live in very different places. Depending on a seed's habitat, it might have very different needs to grow. You're right. All plants need water and sunlight to grow, but how much and when can be very different for each one. The temperature is also very important. Some plants come from hot habitats, so they need the air and ground to be warm. Their seeds won't start to grow until the soil is warm enough. When thinking about planting seeds, it can also be helpful to know if the plant it grows into is perennial or annual. Perennial plants are plants that can live for a long time. They come back season after season season like a tree. Have you seen tulips pop up from the ground as winter turns to spring? They were already planted in the soil during winter, and when spring came, they started to grow. Most plants that we grow in veggie gardens are annual plants. They have to be replanted every year. And when they get planted, some of them grow really fast, and some take a bit longer to get big and strong. We have to make sure that there is enough time for our plants to finish growing before it gets cold again in the fall and winter. Yes, there is a lot to consider, Squeaks. So let's think about how we can keep track of what we need to do. Do you know what I think we need? I think what we might need to track all these instructions is a calendar. But first, we need to learn what each of our seeds needs to grow. Lucky thing, our friend Juniper the Earthworm, the fort's gardener, said she'd stop by to help us make a seed calendar today. Here she comes. Hi, friends. Hi, Juniper. We're excited to plant these seeds, but we're having a little trouble figuring out when we should start. Can you help us? I'd love to. I absolutely love helping plants grow. So we need to know what the last frost date is for our area. The last frost date? That's right. A frost is when the temperature is so low that the ground and other things outside can freeze. You might see ice on the leaves and grass outside or on car windshields, and that can hurt many plants. In winter, there might be a frost every night, but as we get closer to spring, there will eventually be a time where it isn't very likely for it to freeze anymore. The last frost date can be a different day for different places. Every plant has to be planted either before or after the last frost date for your area. So let's see what we have here. Oh, radishes. Yum. These need to be planted in the ground about six weeks before the last frost. They like it when it's a little chilly. But these beans need to be warmer. They should be planted after the last frost. Some plants, like tomatoes, come from places that have very long, warm growing seasons, so they need lots of time to grow. In cooler places, like where we live, they need to be planted in pots inside at least six weeks before the last frost. After the last frost, you can transplant or move them from their pots into the ground outside. Wow. How did you learn so much about plants, Juniper? Well. I've read a lot of books and practiced with a lot of seeds to learn what I know, but also it helps to look at the back of the seed packet. Seed packets usually have instructions on how and when to plant the seeds. Okay, Squeaks, 
Now we have enough information to start working on our calendar. The first thing we need to do is mark our last frost date. Then we can count the weeks backward to find when to plant our first seeds. The last frost date for the fort should be around May 15th right here. But remember, different places have different last frost dates. You can have your grown-ups help you look up the last frost date for where you are. Okay, so what do we need to do next weeks? That's right. Count six weeks back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> wow, you're right, Squeaks. We don't have a lot of time to get these in the ground. Let's plant these, and then we'll see what the other seeds need. Thanks for starting the garden with us, Juniper. Of course. I'm so excited for you both. Growing your own garden can be difficult, but it feels amazing to see seeds that you planted grow into beautiful plants. And thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Kids. You can ask a grown-up to help send questions to us. They can get started at patreon.com slash scishowkids. And we'll see you next time here at the fort.